We're standing in the front yard of the Carter House in Franklin, Tennessee. And the Carter House had the misfortune of being caught in the center, the vortex of the bloodiest five hours of the American Civil War. In fact, the inner federal trench line ran just to the left of the Red Farm Office. The Battle of Franklin was brutal and vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting as the Confederates burst through the center to around the middle of the house area and of course the Carter Farm Office. In fact, this is the most bullet riddled bill in all of America still standing from the war. But the scars only tell part of the story. One of the most poignant stories of the Battle of Franklin is the Carter family that was hiding in the basement during these horrendous hours and their son, Captain Throderick Todd Carter, who had been away for three and a half years in all those major campaigns, now deployed in line of battle, viewing his home in the distance, except home was on the other side of the federal trench lines. Todd Carter was born here March 24, 1840. Grew up on the farm. Enlisted May 18, 1861 in Company H, 20th Tennessee Infantry. Served in the battles from Shiloh to Chattanooga where he's captured November 25th of 63. Went to prison at Johnson Island. Escaped from a prison train. Made his way back to the Army at Dalton, Georgia in time for the battles of, around Atlanta. And now in November of 1864, He's back home in Middle Tennessee. And around 3.55 p.m. on November 30th, about a mile and a half southwest of us, Captain Carter pulls out his field glasses, views the enemy's positions in the distance, pointed to a man named J.J. Smith and said that if Kent, the color bear falls, will you, my brave man, carry these colors forward? The man said, yes, I will. Captain Carter drew his sword said, follow me boys, I'm almost home. And at 4 p.m., 20,000 Southerners, 18 Confederate brigades, 100 Confederate regiments, bands playing, flags flying, open field, they marched down the slopes right into immortality. Of course, Confederates coming through the center, brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting, went from 150 yards north of us, Emerson Updike's Federal Brigade, 2,000 strong, and they met on the run like waves crashing together. It's a scene out of the bowels of hell. And meanwhile, the family was taking refuge down in this basement as the battle was raging just on the other side of that wall. The heavy fighting dies down about 9 o'clock with skirmishing by 11 o'clock, leaving a scene of indescribable horror. Finally, around 3.30 a.m., the family emerges from the basement after the Federal Army had withdrawn to Nashville. Shortly thereafter, General Thomas Benton Smith rise up to the back steps and informs the family that Captain Carter is wounded around 175 yards southwest of the home. And in time, the two sisters and father and a small African-American boy by the name of Oscar, who held the lantern, moved to that southwest area through that carnage. And there they met two Alabama soldiers carrying Captain Carter on an overcoat. The sisters start to wail and scream. And the Alabama soldiers brought Captain Carter into the parlor where Dr. Deering Roberts, 20th Tennessee Regimental Surgeon, performed surgery on his head wound, one of nine wounds he suffered. And after the surgery was brought into this room, the sick room, where he went in and out of consciousness. But at the last he regained consciousness and looked up at the McEwen ladies and he said, I know you but I cannot speak to you now. And on December 2nd, 
his last words in this room were appropriately enough, home, home, home. Thank you.